have the Eagle Mountain Community Facilities District. I call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Chair Kavanaugh. Yes. Board Member Yates. Present. Vice Chair Lejay. Here. Board Member Brown. Here. Board Member Hampton. Here. Board Member Elkey. Here. Board Member Dickey. Here. And uh, call for the public. Do we have any speaker cards? No, ma'am. All right, number one, consideration of approving the Eagle Mountain Community Facilities District Board meeting minutes of June 7, 2012. So moved. Second? Okay. Uh, any speaker cards? No, ma'am. Any council discussion? Okay, then. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chairman 7 0. Consideration of resolution EMCFD 2012. Yeah. Oh, 03, amending the notice provisions in resolution EMCFD 2012-01 and EMCFD 2012-02 related to the required public hearing by setting an additional public hearing on August 2nd, 2012. So moved. Second. Andrew? Madam Mayor, members of the council, after the last on uh, notices were sent out, we discovered a defect in the prior notice, and rather than fudging it at all, we're just going to move it off to August and re-notice everything to make sure it's done exactly properly. We've got another meeting to do it. We can do the final budget adoption hearing and levy all in August on the first meeting. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, any council discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, at this time I will adjourn the Eagle Mountain Community Facilities District Board. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Aye. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? At this time I will open a special session of the Cottonwood Maintenance District Board. And roll call, please. Chair Cavanaugh? Here. Board Member Yates? Here. Vice Chair Lucia? Here. Board Member Dickey? Here. Board Member Elkey? Here. Board Member Hanson? Here. Board Member Brown? Here. And uh, call to the public and speaker cards? No, ma'am. Consideration of approving the Cottonwood Maintenance District Board meeting minutes of June 7, 2012. So, second. Any speaker cards? No, ma'am. Council discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair 7 0. Consideration of Resolution CMD 2012-03, amending the notice provision in Resolution CMD 2012-01 and CMD 2012-02, related to the required public hearing by setting an additional public hearing on August 2nd. So moved. Second. This is in order to 2012. Aye. <laughs> any, council any council discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chairman 7 0. At this time, I will adjourn the Cottonwood Maintenance District Board. Motion? Opposed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. All right. And that's, now we will open the regular session of the Town Council meeting of June 21st. And we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And, uh, Pastor Good. That's a good from Fountain Hill Presbyterian Church. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Me. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving Lord, you bless us in so many ways. We give you thanks for the beauty and the vitality of this community. And we give you thanks that you have called each of us to leadership here in our own ways. So we ask now that you would be very present with us this evening as we seek to carry out the responsibilities which you have entrusted to us. Grant us integrity, that we might be true to our shared calling. Grant us vision, that we might be respectful of our traditions, yet open to the new possibilities which are just now revealing themselves. Grant us discernment, that we might govern wisely and decide rightly. Grant us courage, that we might move forward boldly. 
Protect us, we pray, from all those things which undermine clear communication, gracious governance, and strong society. In the power of your Spirit, bind us together in the common cause of forwarding the best interests of all who call Fountain Hills home. Lord, we confess that the task which lies before us is more than we dare undertake under our own individual strength. It is more than we can hope to achieve even under our concerted will as a group. So be with us, we pray. Guard us, guide us, and direct us that we may be the best we can be and that your loving will for this community, which you have so richly blessed, becomes a reality. We come before you from numerous faith traditions. We hear you speak in many voices. We call you by many names. But together we all know you as the one true God, creator and sustainer of all that is good and right and beautiful. And so it is that we turn to seek your guiding spirit this night, that we might celebrate those things with which you bind us together, rather than bowing to those with which we hold ourselves apart. Amen. 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 Can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Kavanaugh? Yes. Vice Mayor Lachey? Yes. Councilmember Dickey? Yes. Councilmember Brown? Yes. Councilmember Yates? Present. Councilmember Hampton? Yes. Councilmember Elkey? Yes. All right, at this time I'd like to read a proclamation designating July as Park and Recreation Month. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the town of Fountain Hills, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, and whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and to also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase the community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community. And whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors, and whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Park and Recreation Month, and whereas the town of Fountain Hills recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved by I, Linda Cavanaugh, Mayor of the town of Fountain Hills, Arizona, that July is recognized as Park and Recreation Month in the town of Fountain Hills. Okay. Um, we have called the public. Any questions? Yes, All right. Now we'll go on to our consent agenda. Number one, consideration for approval of resolution 2012-16, abandoning certain portions of the public utility and drainage easement located at 15828 East Tumble Tumbleweed Drive. Number two, consideration of approving a liquor license application submitted by Rick Lynn McCone, owner agent of Fountain Entertainment LLC, DBA Pin, located at 16737 East Parkview Avenue for a Series 7 license, beer and wine bar. Number three, consideration of confirming appointments as follows to serve on the Town Council Subcommittee for the purpose of interviewing applicants for the Town's Boards and Commissions in fiscal year 2012-13 as listed. And uh, can I have a motion? So moved, Mayor. Okay. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Council discussion. Okay, then we will um, have a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Yates? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Vice Mayor Leger? Aye. 
Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 7 0. Okay. And I'd like to thank all the council members for serving on the subcommittee. Now we go on to our regular agenda items. Number four listed, consideration of appointing two citizens to the Strategic Planning Advisory Commission, each for a two-year term expiring on June 30, 2014. I move to appoint Audra Coaster Thomas and Peter Bordeaux to serve on the Strategic Planning Advisory Commission, each for a two-year term expiring on June 30, 2014. And I need a second. Okay. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. And council discussion? No. Okay. And we'll have a roll call vote on that, please. Council Member Yates? Aye. Vice Mayor Lejay? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 7 0. And I want, I want like to thank both Audra and Peter for offering to serve for the next two years. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I'd like to thank uh, other some of the individuals that did apply. We were we were very lucky to actually have four applicants for two positions, which was really a good problem to have. Okay. Anything else from council? All right. Going to number five, consideration of special events liquor license application. Submitted by Robert Bo James, representing the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post Number 57507, for the purpose of a fundraiser to be held at Fountain Park Performance Head, an immediate area on Wednesday, July 4, 2012, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Ken, please. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to the council. There's a um, request for a project for the um, recommendation regarding the liquor license for special events, um, staff recommends approval for that. The 4th of July event is going to be held at the park. It's uh, a number of activities are going to be there with parachute teams and, and uh, music, as well as other activities that's, uh, that's going on with uh, the July 4th event. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from council? Questions? Yes. Councilman Elke. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to provide uh, some additional information. This is a uh, fourth at the fountain. Um, I'll be obtaining from this vote as I establish an LLC to bring a large event, a large fourth of July event back to Fountain Hills. There will be a nighttime skydiving drop. We have aging hipsters, which will be performing, as well as um, Arizona Blues Project, hot dog eating contest, a lot of fun food and activities for the kids. The nighttime skydiving uh, uh, drop is going to be phenomenal. We won't have uh, fireworks or a laser light show this year, but uh, hopefully in years to come, if the event is successful and people attend, which I fully anticipate, we're going to have a great time down there. Any other questions from council? All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. And any super cards? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Any more council discussion? Then uh, call for the vote. The roll call vote, please. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Vice Mayor Lejay? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Yates? Aye. Council Member Elke is abstaining. Council Member Brown? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 6 0. All right, number six. Consideration with possible direction to staff relating to the operation of the fountain in Fountain Park. Can we? Or Mayor Kavanaugh, Member of Council, Mark has a. Um, um, a report regarding the memo that's in your packet for discussion of the alternative for the uh, operation of the fountain. Mayor Kavanaugh, members of the council. Um, over the years, I have received a number of uh, requests from the public to take a look at the operation of the fountain, and I, I'm sure that uh, council members have received similar, if not more, requests. Uh, received several fairly recently, and I thought it was probably a good change with the, the change in the mayorship and the council as a whole to bring this item up and uh, ask for your consideration if there's an alternative way that the uh, council might be interested in having us operate the fountain. What I tried to do there was list the alternatives that I'd heard over the past and different options. As indicated in my report, uh, given the uh, variables, there are probably hundreds if not thousands of possible options between the motors, run time, hours of the day, that kind of thing. Um, we also tried to look at options that stayed within our budget. Clearly, some of the options that are shown 
uh, are exceeding the budget, which next year is set as 138500 for the operation of the fountain. Um, just to clarify something, the night run times are unaffected. This is simply uh, talking about the times when the fountain would run for the purpose of uh, people uh, watching the fountain. It's not to cover the uh, mixing that we do at night. So that's a clarification I wanted to make to everybody. Um, the cost, as we indicated, uh, would also include in the report, I said that there would be some additional costs if we change the run times. A $600 fee to do reprogramming that would be required. And then secondly, an expense of $6,000. You may recall that a year or two ago, we installed signage around the park at six locations that uh, has signage that describes the, how the fountain operates and what time. So if the times were changed, we would need to change those out again. Um, I also, uh, at the end of the report, made a recommendation that whatever direction the council gives me, if there's a change to how we're operating the fountain, we would suggest and I would encourage that we uh, contact the uh, estimators from SRP to give us a better idea on exactly where those numbers would be. I'd be the first one to admit this isn't my expertise. Uh, we have what is called a rolling rate that's charged to the fountain. Basically what that means is that the rate is constantly changing. It's based on how many other users are on the grid at any one time and how much power is being used. So when somebody asks me what it costs to run the fountain, I kind of have to explain it in fairly simple terms because that's the best way to understand it. And that's what I tried to do in my report. Basically broke it down in the number of run times. Uh, there's much more scientific ways of doing that, and SRP can do that for us. And so uh, whatever the council decides, I think we should take that recommendation or that suggestion to SRP and get a better feel what those final numbers might be. Um, I also indicated in there that there was a range of uh, costs associated with from a, uh, a high of an additional 55000 to a cost savings potentially of as much as 67000 So that's a pretty good swing. Um, so with that, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time and bore you with a lot of numbers, but there, frankly there wasn't another way to do it. Uh, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on each of these scenarios, but I'll briefly touch on the highlights. Um, the current operation, as I described there, basically runs 13 times on the hour for a 15 minute time period. And so we broke it down based on the number of times that it runs per year and figured out based on that cost, we're looking at somewhere around $29.15 for a 15 minute run. Uh, one of the other options that's been suggested is running the fountain on one pump continually for 12 hours. Um, that would be roughly, we're estimating from nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night. And have the second pump, on, pump come on four times daily Again, these are arbitrary, uh, but 9, noon, 3, and 6 seem to be a fairly reasonable spacing. Uh, the intent was to provide something when it first came on, and then again in the evening, perhaps when people downtown, restaurants, bars, that kind of thing. Um, and again, you can see the cost there is one typo that I wanted to make you aware of in case somebody caught this on their own. On that last bullet point under item number 2, uh, it says both of these uh, costs is Hundred twenty six thousand six thirteen should be one hundred and five because if you add those two numbers together, you don't get one hundred twenty six six thirteen. So one change there. Um, and then uh, another suggestion that was we were asked to look at was simply running the fountain an additional fifteen minutes, so a total of thirty minutes. And then as you can see here, the numbers uh, cost would be an additional fifty five thousand in contrast with the uh, with the savings above on option number two. The fourth option is to run it continuously for eight hours on two pumps. Again, there's the cost price on there times the number of days, um, an additional cost of 4000 So a little bit more actually than we have budgeted at this point. And uh, option number eight, or excuse me, number five would be a continuous eight hour run on one pump instead of two pumps. Again, not surprising, there'd be substantial savings of around $67,000. And the last one was the suggestion that has come forward on the possibility of changing the operation of what we do now on windy days. The fault is set up so that because of the spray drift and the effluent that we need to keep on the site and not uh, hit pedestrians or people with their cars parked or neighboring homes uh, with effluent water, is that uh, in the past it used to operate and come up on one pump and then come up a sec on a second pump. And then it would shut itself down if the wind speeds were 9 to 10 miles an hour or over. Okay. Uh, that has now been changed so the fountain doesn't come on at all. And again, it reads the, the uh, wind speed for a period of time both before the fountain is to come off and then after it does, in fact, come up, it'll read the airspeed for a period of time. And if that airspeed exceeds that 9 to 10 miles an hour, it will shut itself down. 
In this case, it no longer comes on as the way it's operating now. So under this scenario, we would instead of two pumps, we would operate on one pump. Obviously, the spray drift would be a lot less. We could turn up the wind speed. Uh, we don't know exactly what that magical number might be, but the assumption is it could be 25, 30 miles an hour. So anything short of monsoon-type wind, then we probably are going to be okay. We'd have to monitor that and figure out what the wind speeds would be. But that's another option. So where the first five options are really associated with running the fountain on a daily basis, the last option is uh, in a high wind event. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that I can. Um, Mayor Cavanaugh, members of the council, it's my recommendation that we give consideration to number two. That would be running it um, for the 12 hours, 9 to 9, on one pump, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and four times daily that we kick on the second pump for a 15-minute period during those four times. And then we could adjust the wind speed so that it would always stay on in that one pump. Any uh, Councilman Brown? Thank you, Mayor. I live across the street, Mark, from, from the fountain, uh, actually adjacent to the pumps. And the first thing I would like to talk about is your velometer, your wind speed control. You might ought to put some WD-40 on that occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't always shut down, and it doesn't always keep the water off the houses across the street. But I, I, we're home usually by 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, open the blinds, and I watch the fountain come up, and I watch the fountain shut off. I love every step of it. I mean, I, I'm a big fountain fan, but... I, I can see some value in letting the fountain run nine to nine with, with three or four hour, four times where the second pump comes on. I can see some value to that for the people that come to town. It won't be, I don't think quite as dramatic as watching it come completely on and shutting completely off, but I think having the fountain on all the time can have some advantage for the, for the, especially the, the tourists that come to town. And I would make the recommendation to kick around while we're talking about it. Let's do it on like a 90-day trial. Let's let's say get all the programming done, start at August 1st, and that would let us run August, September, and October, which the majority of the snowbirds would be back for October. It would get the, the local citizens and the and the people that live around the fountain that that put up with the uh, kilometer not shutting off. It just jumps easy, Mark. I understand, but. Um, you know, that would be my recommendation. I would I would go along with something like that. And thanks, Mark. Mark, is it a long process to set up? I mean, could that be set up by August? Or? Oh, yes, easily. Um, he estimated, I believe the number was uh, about eight hours. Uh, four hours to do the actual programming and then four hours to install it. So it's a relatively quick process. Okay. And um, if we were just doing it for a temporary time, could we just then put up some sort of temporary signage rather than going to the expense of changing all the signs and, and maybe it wouldn't be permanent? Sure, we could do something that would look, uh, obviously it's not going to look as nice, but we could certainly put up something that would look, and most importantly inform the public, laminated so it would hold up to the weather, that kind of thing, certainly. And um, I'm assuming that our water quality would be improved with the extra aeration? We, we did do some calculations. I don't recall specifically, again, it, with so many options, but it's all a function, again, of how much water goes through. One of the challenges, if you think about it, we only are pulling the water from one location. That's where the pump house is itself. There are two wet wells, so to speak, and the pipes actually sit down and pull water from that location. But it also occurs to me that if you're pulling water from there and then you're sending it back out in the middle of the lake, you're going to get that mixing effect. So that's precisely why we do it at night and running the fountain for a longer period of time. We're moving more water, so that's always good. Okay. Uh, Councilman. Oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, the, this is kind of new to us as far as having proposals in front of us, so I wanted to just um, say some general things. The motivation for this, even though we've been talking a lot about the water quality, sounds like it's more to do with um, attraction or business or tourism or visitors and things like that. So just to kind of put it out there, to me, um, the having a, having nothing happen and then having it get come up is kind of a spectacle in itself. So 
So I was watching that happen and then watching it come down and then splash and then disappear um, is part of the whole show, I guess, uh, in my mind. And I was thinking about like some of the other things that happen in the, the rest of the country and the world, like the Eiffel Tower. They have these um, strobe lights that go on, but it's every hour, but it's five minutes, and everybody kind of goes to, to see and make sure you're there on time. Um, you know, uh, Old Faithful, obviously, which isn't... Uh, doesn't have a switch, but, you know, people will go in and then they'll say, well, it's going to go off in an hour, so let's have lunch or let's do something. So if we were kind of talking about that, talking about the visitor aspect of it, I like that it comes up at a certain time. I think it adds an air of anticipation. And maybe some of the businesses in the area, you know, could play around with it a little bit, say, you know, I, you just missed it by 10 minutes, so for the next half hour, you know, two scoops of ice cream for one, or, or something like that kind of play into that. Um, obviously, I've lived here for a long time, 29 years, and the idea of it every hour and the hour kind of appeals to me. Uh, so, you know, as sort of that being a baby about it, making that change. Um, when we come home from Payson, uh, you can see the fountain from this one area that's pretty far away. And I was looking at the clock on the on the car to say, well, are we going to make it? Are we going to get in that area when it comes up? It's just it's kind of a neat phenomenon to me in that way. The other part of it is the um, uh, I would want to know more information about the wear and tear on the pumps and the motor. You know, what effect would some of these changes have on any of those? You know, that actual stuff and maintenance. When would would it change the replacement time when we would need to to do that? And then. Um, talking a little bit about the median and some of the things that are in our big picture. The water quality is in our big picture. Um, talking to the sanitary district, you know, talking about different relationships that we have there um, and, and taking care of the, of the lake. And then the median and the movie theater, I feel, I feel like, uh, and, and the intersection, which I'm not to bring up, but I feel like we're kind of on the verge of making some big decisions about the area, the turf, the ducks, you know, it all kind of goes together. So I wonder if um, if we did something for a little while, would that be a source of confusion? Would it be, what what would we be hoping to find in 90 days? Do we think we get more uh, visitors, more tax money, do we, or do we think the water will be better? What's the, the goal of it? And would it be okay to maybe wait a little bit as we're sort of, I feel like on the verge of some of bigger things and maybe this would really fit into that, the branding, the whole idea of a visitor. So I just throw that out there. I'm not like crazy, you know, about, you know, falling short about any of this. I just wanted to put some of that stuff out there and see what other people might have thought. Because I really, literally, um, my fault for not looking at this a lot earlier, but this and then the newspaper yesterday was really the first I realized it was going to be a serious so. Uh, in relation to the uh, where I have the pumps, I remember my visit to the pump house and um, we talked about uh, the starting and, and stopping actually being more of a wear and tear on the pumps than the steady. So I think that kind of answers that question, that when you run it steady and you're not, you don't have that big spike on and off, you're actually saving your motor. Am I correct on that? Mayor Kevin, that is correct. Uh, I would also say uh, the other source of wear and tear is what takes place at the base of the pumps with all the lights and shields down there. Every time that water cascades back down again from a height of 330 feet, it's pretty tough on that equipment. So it would help us in both of those respects if there was at the on and off. Councilman okay. Yates? Uh, I have two things. Mark, not to put you in a corner, but what would you recommend on those proposals or some combination thereof? Well, really, in my mind, it comes down to two things. Um, People, for the most part, at least the ones that I don't hear about or hear from, seem to be happy with it. Uh, it's been operating at least 10 years the way it is, um, but I also recognize that there's a lot of folks who would like to see it run longer, and if, if it obviously is the icon of our community, so the ability to run it longer, in my mind, makes some sense for lots of reasons. So I kind of like option number two. It's the best of both worlds, and then it also saves us some dollars. It's actually less expensive to run it that way than it is the way we're currently running it. So there's some advantages there as well. So it would be either to keep it the way it is or the option number two. All right. My second question or encouragement to go along with uh, Councilperson Dickey is um, the, the more movement, I think, the better. I, I think conceptually we're, we're right on it. We need to start doing more. I'm almost more apt to say let's, 
run it constantly, but then run the second one every hour on the hour the same way so that we keep going. But I, I kind of would defer to the visitor's girl or that maybe we need to sit down with the people who are in the know and, and come up with a plan that says, all right, here's the best way to get it, not to paint the wrong picture, but she's this house in Vegas. Obviously, that show, that's something to look at. But movement in water, obviously, there's more cachet to something like that as opposed to just a running faucet for, for 12 hours a day. So I, I would go along with number two with the caveat of, of sitting down with, uh, you know, whether it be the visitors bureau, the people that we're asking to help promote this, or some other group that might have some more expertise in this and come up with a plan. If we are saving money and it's already in the budget, I'm, I'm not against spending that additional funds to do it every hour on the hour or, or more frequent to create that, uh, that ambiance. Councilman Alke. Mark, uh, at present, uh, at, with the current schedule that we have, do you know the amount of water, or perhaps ten, that we circulate at present at 15 minutes? Well, I, I can tell you that on three pumps we run 7,000 gallons, so we're running roughly what 2,333 gallons a minute through each pump. Right, let's just say with what we're doing right now, where we're going 15 minutes every hour on the hour with two pumps. Well, you take 2,333 times two. What do you got? Six, 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 four, six, six, nine hundred thousand. A little over, roughly over a little. Yeah. Nine hundred thousand gallons times fifteen. So nine hundred thousand gallons times fifteen, fifteen minutes each. Okay. Now with the with the option two, can you compare that as to how many gallons we would be moving for ten? Estimate about a million eight. About a million eight. So we'd be nearly doubling the amount of affluent that we would be circulating through if we were to do this option two. Just to keep things in mind and perspective, the, the, the lake itself is 100 million gallons. Sure. So turnover is months. Sure. Uh, but obviously, the more water we can run through, the better for water clarity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Councilman Lachey. Vice Mayor, okay. I respond to just about anything. <laughs> Henry's fine. Um, Mayor, are there any speaker cards? Um, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing from the public if there are any comments. No, Mayor. No? Okay. Well, that being said, I'd like to make a, a comment myself. Um, I think option two, increasing um, run times, provides a practical solution. And we talked about what that practical solution is. It enhances circulation and aeration, which has a positive effect on water quality, at least in, in theory. Um, however, constantly running the fountain minimizes um, its appeal. I mean, many residents, I've lived here for 20 years, many of the residents I've, I've spoken with, family, friends, as well as um, visitors over the past 20 years on our pretty much current schedule, find the appeal and the allure um, of, of the fountain. It, it, it's, it's coming on, it's powering up, it's going up, it's coming down. And if you spend much time at the park, as I do, um, and you observe folks, um, typically what they do is they anticipate the fountain coming up, and then it comes up, and they get excited, and five minutes after that, their attention is elsewhere. So I don't certainly question um, the need to enhance um, what we're doing currently. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of moving beyond the status quo. However, if we're trying to uh, create more interest um, by having it on constantly, I'm not sure that that addresses, addresses that goal. Um, I think that running it constantly on one pump actually makes it less spectacular than it is currently, and then pumping it up to two pumps occasionally gets us back to where we are. So we've come full circle, we're running it continuously, and I think we're, we're at status quo. How about considering, if we are in favor of option two, running the fountain, as has been suggested, 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Let's do something big here. Let's take a risk. Why don't we move it from one pump to three pumps twice a day at high noon and at 6 p.m.? 
Now, to me, that would be a, an attraction for visitors. I don't know if there's many of you that recall being here the one time or two times in 20 years that that thing was put up three pumps. It was an event. So what we're doing now is a non-event to attract people. And if we created an event, something we could really market for businesses, I would be in favor of option two with a slight tweak. Rather than doing this, excuse me, the two pumps for four hours, do the three pumps for two hours. And if you do the math, um, you're basically coming out with, with, with the same, same cost. So I throw that on for uh, consideration. Um, and um, my expectation would be that we would research it and hopefully stay within the budget. But to me, that would be doing something exciting. Because what we're suggesting now is longer. Dura duration doesn't equal more effectiveness. If we're looking at creating an effective event, we need to do something spectacular. And one last comment. The one or two times we did that, we had people from in town as well as people from out of town. And I look at this as enhancing an amenity, not simply for business, although that is a certain consideration in tax bill revenue, but doing something special for our own residents and their visitors. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Hanson. Mark, how do we see making these changes fit in with the discussions with the sanitary district and the possible IGA? Um, while there's obviously a connection, I think the two are somewhat separate. Um, as we discussed this evening, there are obviously going to be some benefits of this. It's not going to go all the way to improving the water quality to the extent that uh, has been proposed. So it will not solve the issue. I think it will help the issue. I think maybe we're overstating, though, the benefit of the aeration. I mean, like you said, the lake is very large, and this isn't going to do anything to move the water all around the perimeter. So I, I want us to keep that into perspective that this isn't going to really help the water quality because, you know, there's been a lot of time spent over the last year, you know, studying the water quality and how to improve the water quality. And, you know, every time we hear that, you know, just running the fountain isn't going to be adequate to do that. So I want to keep those two things kind of separate. Um, I do agree with Henry. Um, when you have something all the time, you tend to start taking it for granted because you, you just know you're going to see it all day, every day. And I, I think it, there is something to the spectacle of the fountain going up and even watching it come down. I mean, it is, it is an event. And I think Henry's suggestion to, um, to take it to all three is going to kind of counteract the fact that, you know, it's just kind of a little pump going on in the middle most of the day. Um, I'd like to see it running on one to get an idea of what it really looks like. I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be kind of anticlimactic or, or what. And then your suggestion to, um, uh, to get with SRP, I think that would be the first thing that we would want to do to get some firmer numbers to, to know what we're really looking at. And Councilman Brown? Two other questions, Mark. Currently, when the, when the pumps run at the evening, the nighttime, the lights come on with it? Correct. If, if it comes on in the daylight, do the lights come on? No. I've never looked at that, okay. It's on, it's, and, on a, it's on a timer. And then the second thing, can it be programmed where if it is 9 to 10 miles an hour, the second pump will come on? But if you turn the pump, the third pump on it at uh, 9 to 10 miles an hour and elevate it to yet another 250 feet or so, that really does cause a, a, a wind fall of, of rain. Can you can you can it be programmed to where if it is nine to ten miles an hour, only the second pump comes on. If it's five miles an hour all, or below, not below nine miles an hour, all three pumps come on. Very good question, but I don't have an answer for you. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. But everything we've proposed to the program person so far, he's been able to do. So my inkling is that he would be able to do that. Thank you. Councilwoman, just. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the wind, when you have the one pump up, I mean, yeah, just the one. So, so if it's running all the time, and say the wind does get um, whatever that amount is, that makes it go off, would it keep trying to come back up? I mean, because right now, I guess, if, it's, if it tries to go up and then it comes down, then it tries again the next hour. So what would it do, you know, would it keep trying until the wind down, died down? So, so that's 
something um, to ask if we're moving forward with having it on all the time. And also, um, since I don't, I mean, I, I know you live there, but other people that live in that area, it might be good to find out what they think about what it would, would it be like. I mean, is I'm not there enough to know, does it spray even on the one pump, and, and would people not like it? Is there any noise besides the, the oil you were talking about? Or So if we're moving forward, I, that's the question, I, and I would rather have a more definitive answer about the pump, because while I understand wear and tear happens when it's on and off, um, having it on all the time, there's, there's, I, I would just like to hear definitely what the ramifications of that would be. I mean, it's because it's kind of counterintuitive to think that you could keep something on all the time and not have that affect it one way, you know, a little bit. So I'd like to know more about the wind, more about the neighbors, and, um, and again, I, you know, I, I'm okay with the, with the three uh, pumps because I think, again, it seems like a good... Uh, way to attract attention and I thought that was why we were looking at this more than anything else. What, what I was just going to add, one of the challenges that we have with the wind is it depends on which direction it's coming out of because if you think about it, some of the houses are far closer depending on which side of the uh, lake they're on. So fortunately, uh, most of the wind, wind we get is out of the southwest and so um, that's probably the farthest distance before you get to any houses. Conversely, uh, right across the street, the pump house is probably the closest spot at any point. So. Uh, it really depends a lot on which way the, the wind is blowing. On really, really windy days, we simply go in there and switch it to manual so it doesn't come on automatically because there's no point. Um, so, But that doesn't happen a lot. Um, but on windy days, again, that sensor will continue to sense the wind speed. And on this continuous runtime, at any time that wind drops down below, it would come back on again. Okay. Wherever we set that wind speed at, it would come back on again. And, that, and I think that some of the discussion we had had at the pump house, too, was that on that one pump that it, it really doesn't spray, unless there's a heavier wind, it really doesn't spray outside the, mm -hmm. outside the uh, lake area. Correct. So we'd be pretty safe if we were running it on the one pump. And we, that's why I said we'd probably be in a position where we could certainly turn up the wind speed, uh, 25, 30 miles an hour, depending on if we were running it on one pump, because it would take a lot, a lot of wind, you know, monsoon type. Pretty mind winds to I think push it past the perimeter of the lake with only one pump. Yeah. Right there with it. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Hansen asked a question about height and um, doesn't have a sense for what one pump would do. You, you certainly know average heights for one pump, two pumps, three pumps. What what are those numbers? Just uh, the maximum height on three pumps is 560. On two pumps, it's 330. The only one I don't know, Henry, is one, but I would assume it's somewhere in the 160 to 165 foot range. So it's significant gain at two and, and a real big big bang at, at a, a real nice spectacle at three. Okay, sure. thank you. Well, I think what we're hearing, what I'm hearing is that uh, we like option number two, and I think now that Vice Mayor Lachie has... Um, gotten us all excited about three pumps. I think I think we're we're thinking about number two with um, with an uh, an addition of the uh, of going with the three pumps maybe twice. So um, would you like to make a motion to that effect or um, I'd be more than happy to make a motion. Are, are we looking for a motion here? Um, for a motion. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any more discussion than I'm Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I, I think uh, what Vice Mayor said earlier was uh, bringing it up to three pumps twice a day. Am I, am I correct in that statement? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hesitate on a motion. I, uh, I was thinking more about, you know, giving direction to staff uh, to do some additional research on this um, because if, if we do move to three pumps and it's cost prohibitive, um, that's an issue and I would, you know, I, I want to stay within, within our budget. Um, and I think to answer your question, you know, that that's flexible depending on, on what the cost is. I suggested high noon because I think that's a nice theme and, and it draws the lunch crowd. And then I suggested 6 p.m. because that could possibly draw the, the, a dinner crowd. And, and that's obviously flexible, but I think cost has a lot to do with it. And um, anyhow, does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And one, one additional consideration, Mayor, would be perhaps doing it at 6 a.m. I know we have a lot of walkers out there in the morning. I think through our discussion this evening, um, I think we're probably going to elicit a lot of feedback 
from from uh, residents of Fountain Hill, so I think it would probably be best to wait get some of that feedback. Staff do a little bit more research as far as the numbers are concerned based on what you've heard this evening, and perhaps this would be suited for our first uh, council meeting in August. That might be better. Just I don't think there's a, necessarily a need to rush anything. So are we kind of in agreement then that we like number two possibly going to twice during the day um, on the third post, and we're directing staff to give us some numbers and, and look into it. I'd suggest just leaving out how many times because if the numbers are favorable, it could be maybe even four times a day. So that could be determined when we have more information. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mayor, uh, Andrew, do we need to move on that if we're just giving direction? Um, and Mayor, Councilor Yates, the council has given direction in a number of different ways over the years. When there's not an official action to be taken, we're not approving a contract or doing something else. By general consensus, is fine. If you want to have an actual motion, if there's some clarity that needs to be transmitted to the, the staff, if staff has general sense of it, a lot of times we just move on from that point and come back when there's actually more meat to the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, I, and I am in agreement with what appears to be uh, a theme or I don't know, I go so far as to say a consensus with the idea of it running continuously on one pump throughout the day and whether that's going to go up to two or go up to three or whatever that may be based on what we hear from residents and, and staff. Um, also, I mean, there's so, so many different variables. There's so many different possibilities. You can run it, you know, we're, we're going to hear, I'm sure, from, from our residents, why don't you run it? for two hours in the morning, don't run it all day, and then run it one hour at noon, and then run it at another hour at six, or any host of um, possibilities. But I do like the idea of continuously running at least one pump, because it does draw, uh, has a certain draw in our fountain hills. I mean, in fact, we've got the fountain right there. I mean, that's our, that's our logo. That's, that's who we are. And I, I think having it on at least one pump continuously, and then figuring out what we're going to do as far as uh, the remainder would be a good idea. Thank you. Okay, then like I said, it looks like we have a consensus that we want to look into number two, the possibility of going up to the third pump maybe twice, depending on how much it costs, asking staff to look into the cost and come back to us and reviewing it again our first meeting in August. All right? Okay. And we don't need a motion, so that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, then we'll go on to... Number seven, consideration of accepting a memorial with the Bill of Rights and the preamble on it for location in Fountain Park. Mark. Mayor Cavanaugh, members of the council. Um, the Public Art Committee is interested in putting up a memorial that would have both the preamble and the um, Bill of Rights on it. Um, they are willing to pay the costs, which are currently estimated at $4,000. Roughly half of that would go towards the memorial itself. The other half would go to the two plaques that you see in front of you. Um, this would be located in Fountain Park at the site there adjacent to where we previously have placed both the uh, Lincoln statue as well as the Teddy Roosevelt statue. Uh, a representative uh, Mrs. Miles is here this evening if you have any questions of either me or the Public Art Committee. Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I had the occasion to uh, go visit with Jerry and Jackie yesterday and I'm visiting again this evening with Jackie and I'm sure happy to hear that Jerry is coming along and getting healthy and the tubes are out and he's happy. So that's good news. But I've given a little thought since Jerry presented the um, the the main idea to me, and I would like to talk about the possibility of placing it beside the flagpole and adding yet a, not only the two lights to light the flag, but the possibility of adding the third light on the pole, just as we have in in the Centennial Circle, to where you would be able to walk by at night and actually read it, because we do have a lot of night visitors. And I would like to see if that could possibly happen. (laughs) 
Oh, he's in second fast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is that a, is Mark? Can that happen? I guess my question is: It's funded by, and the work so far has been funded and proposed to be funded by the Public Art Committee. Um, I, I don't know if they'd be willing to pay for that additional cost, or is it proposed that the town pay for that? We could certainly discuss it with them. But okay. Having having a nice clock like this, illuminated at night, beside Lincoln. And Teddy, I think that would be a, a good thing. Well, can uh, can we can we accept this, but not as far as the placement goes, and for later discussion, and, and let that go back to public art? Madam um, Mayor, members of the council, you can pretty much do anything you want in terms of the of the placement of this art. The only thing that we typically do is approve placement and uh, the cost to install on the, the location. So if between now and the time that it was actually installed, the installation changed a little bit, I don't think that would really impact at all Mark's work with them between now and then. So the, the location could still be selected and that detail could be worked out between now and, and the time that they come back to us with the actual installation. Any other council discussion? Can I get a motion? Mayor, I move to accept and approve placing the memorial of the Bill of Rights in the preamble to the Constitution in Fountain Park is depicted. Second. And it's a great it's a great idea. Any speaker thoughts? No, Mayor. Okay. Uh, any other council discussion? Mayor. Uh, yes. Mr. Miles, please uh, express the council's appreciation for an, yet another wonderful donation from the uh, uh, Cultural and Civic Association. It's truly making a huge impact on the town and improving the quality of life for everyone here. So thank you. You're here. All right. And uh, can we have a roll call vote on that, please? Councilmember Elsie? Aye. Councilmember Hansen? Aye. Councilmember Yates? Aye. Vice Mayor Lee Aye. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Dickey? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor Seven Zero? All right. Then number, number eight. We've got another one of accepting and improving the placement near the amphitheater in Fountain Park of a bronze sculpture titled Coyote and Chi. And this is on loan for a period of up to one year uh, during a fundraising campaign. As you can see by my memo here, the uh, cost of the piece uh, would be $9,000. And, but it's being acquired for 5000 So the uh, Public Art Committee is in a position where they're going to make the initial contribution of half the cost, and then they will do the fundraising for the other half of the cost during this period of time. We have a donor who has already paid half the amount and expressed the remainder. Okay. A new update. <laughs> That's all bad. You kind of figure like I'm on roller skates tonight or something. <laughs> Um, this is a picture of the piece. It's a very interesting piece. Um, one of the things we had an opportunity to do was uh, walk the park with uh, Mr. Miles and also uh, Sandy Thompson, the chair of the Public Art Committee, trying to figure out a, a, a spot that this would look the best at. And I, I think we were able to find a spot that we think will work very well. Um, you may recall that there was, uh, a, with the Greening Committee, there was a great deal of work done to improve the landscaping around the amphitheater itself. And so this location has been proposed is adjacent to that area, um, and there's a gravel area that runs along the side there. So we think it's a perfect location. It's the right size for a piece to go into that particular location. Now, since we, are, we have a donor now that's paying for it, are they okay with the location? Okay. That's good. Any other council discussion on this? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Any supervisors? No, ma'am. Uh, any other discussion? Then I will call for a vote. Uh, how about all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Any opposed? Mayor seven zero. Okay. Good. Idea. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. All right. Number nine is a presentation by Mike Tyler. Hey, Mike. With at. AZ Business Advisors relating to the first quarter report and progress on goals as specified in the professional services agreement for the Jumpstart Biz Incubator. 
Good evening, uh, Mayor Kavanaugh and members of the Council. Um, this evening, I'd like to give you a little bit of background uh, uh, on the incubator and then ask Mr. Tyler to come up and, and give a presentation on um, the, re, uh, the quarterly reports that they have been giving us uh, on the incubator. As you recall, in September of 2011 at a Council work study session, uh, Mr. Tyler who is with Arizona Business Advisors, presented information regarding the establishment of a Fountain Hills Virtual Business Incubator. The program um, was intended to provide startup and small businesses with support services and resources in order to uh, nurture their growth and increase the likelihood um, that the business would be successful for the long term. Uh, at the December 2011 meeting, the Council reviewed the program again and discussed the funding request because at the September meeting there was a funding request uh, from the Town. Uh, the Council directed staff to prepare and execute a six-month contract uh, to be one of the partners to help support the incubator. And uh, we did uh, indeed per, uh, prepare and execute a six-month contract in the amount of $375 per month for a total funding of $2,250 for a six-month period. And the six-month period was from July 1st, 2012 to June 30th of 2012. So that contract for services uh, will end um, this month, at the end of this month, which is, of course, the end of the... Uh, Pound fiscal year. Um, funding for an additional 12 months of the incubator is included in next year's fiscal, um, fiscal next fiscal year's budget, and to fund the incubator program. And of course, if, uh, if it's the council de desire to continue that funding, then we will uh, work with Arizona Business Advisors, uh, who's the, who uh, we contract with, uh, to craft the scope and execute that contract. Uh, this evening, uh, Mr. Tyler uh, would like to review the progress of the incubator program. And then, of course, uh, again, staff is seeking uh, direction as uh, whether or not the council desires to continue to fund that program. Um, it is in the budget that you all have approved. So um, I will ask Mr. Tyler to come up and speak to you about the incubator. As I get this up more. Right. Glad you're doing that. And um, okay, is it F5? Yeah. Uh, where are we at? There Great. you go. Thanks, Molly. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to update you on our business incubator here in Fountain Hills. You uh, may recall that we originally set this up as a public private partnership between the town and the chamber and the private companies listed here on, on the chart. And when we set it up, we, we defined it, I, I think actually it was Councilmember Leger who defined it as an experiment, because at that point in time we didn't know the extent of the demand that there was going to be for this type of service in Fountain Hills. And we did set some goals based on our assumptions at that time, and I'll go over those in a little bit. And our original premise at the time was that we would use the existing business community to penetrate and make, make them aware of what we were doing. And the premise was that somebody would know somebody who knew somebody who wanted to start a business at. Because where do you find someone who wants to start a business at? They don't all congregate in the same place. Um, that premise is only partially proven true. And, I will, and it and has required us to change focus a little bit. And I'll tell you uh, how that's going to look as we move ahead. Um, the partnership is operated by myself and my three partners in Arizona Business Advisors. And we currently housed in about 1,500 square foot in the Meridian Bank building. So... What have we learned so far? I think, I think we had a good start. You know, we started up in February, so we've been operating now for about four months. We came out of the gate pretty quickly and picked up three clients based on some of the preliminary marketing work that we've done. 
subsequently lost one of those clients as he got into financial difficulties and had to put his business plans on hold while he built up some cash. He says he's going to come back, but who knows. It, it's been slow, uh, and neither of those clients are Fountain Hills residents. So it has been a slow start in finding Fountain Hills residents. However, the good news is that we expect um, a resident to sign a contract on Monday. Uh, so that will be our first one in Fountain Hills. And they are in the nutritional and, and wellness arena. It's kind of an interesting little company. Um, what we have found is that there are most, most startups are coming out of the schools and universities. So we are having to somewhat refocus our efforts, and, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So far, we've seen limited interest from the existing business community. We have made efforts to put on free workshops and um, offer support to existing businesses. Up until this point, there has been little demand. And again, we are going to change our focus a little bit and be more proactive in reaching out to the, ex the existing business community rather than waiting for them to come to us. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute too. I'm going to skip over the next two slides, being respectful of your time, because they're somewhat self-explanatory, and if you have questions, I'll answer them. But suffice it to say that the two clients that we do have are making excellent progress. Both of them have the, the capability of becoming large, scalable businesses, and uh, we're finding ways to involve both of them in the local business community, even though they're not Fountain Hills residents. Uh, the activities that we've been engaged on during the four months that we've been operating have been building relationships, uh, particularly with ASU. We've built strong relationships with other incubators. Uh, the College of Technology and Innovation out in Mesa has been a strong supporter, and we have developed an excellent relationship with the folks out at SkySong. All of those things will, um, will help us as we move ahead in the second half of the year. We have offered three monthly workshops. We had a very limited response to that. We'll continue to offer them, and we'll see how that goes. And we have engaged in the regular marketing. We've done press releases. We've done social media, we've made presentations. I've made presentations to the various clubs and organizations in town. We've reached out to a number of the larger banks and businesses. Um, we, we're starting up a newsletter this coming month. Where we plan to go for the next few months is, in August, we're going to launch a best business idea for Fountain Hills residents. So we will offer a prize of $1,000 and a free year in the incubator for someone who comes up with the best business idea. They must be a Fountain Hills resident and uh, we'll have a whole series of um, bases for monitoring and judging the various ideas. So that should kick off in August. I'm also working with the high school to do a similar thing at the high school in the fall. Um, We've developed, as I said, a strong relationship with ASU, and one of the things I just want to spend a bit of time on is the Edson Grant program. The Edson Grant is um, based on a foundation that ASU manages, which awards up to $20,000 in cash to about 20 startup companies every year. And for those awards, there are applicants of about 300. So it provides a rich source of potential applicants for our, for our incubator. And on uh, June 29th, they're, bringing, they're doing a bus tour of the winners of the 2012 awards. So there will be 20, um, 20 prospective candidates going around the 10 or so incubators that we have in the valley, and they'll be coming here at 10.30 in the morning. So it's a great opportunity for us to showcase not only our own, our incubator, but Fountain Hills. So Mayor Kavanaugh has agreed to speak, and I certainly invite uh, any of the rest of, of the council members to, to come. It'll be a great opportunity to interact with some of these potential startup companies. Um, as I said, we're going to try and be more proactive in reaching out to the local businesses, so we're starting a series of monthly lunches at the incubator. Our first one is on June 26th, uh, this Tuesday 
We've got five businesses coming, and we'll continue to do that uh, every month for the next uh, for, the, for the rest of the year. Again, just building the awareness, looking for people who know people. When I called on some of the larger banks in town just a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of surprised to learn that they'd not heard of the incubator. So clearly in some areas we're not getting the message out and we have to be more proactive in, in calling, which we've begun. Our original 2012 goals were to engage with at least f uh, five clients. And, and I, I viewed that as a 12-month kind of program. We kind of on a somewhat different calendar than the town who's on the fiscal year. We're operating on the calendar year as are the other sponsors. But right now we have three clients. Uh, I can foresee that by the end of this year we will easily beat that goal of five clients. Uh, originally we were looking to attract at least two more sponsors. For us in Arizona business uh, drivers, it's really not sustainable for five clients and, and three or four sponsors. We probably need eight to ten clients and maybe five to six sponsors in, in order to make it financially viable. Um, but at this point in time, we decided to back off looking for sponsors and focus our efforts on getting clients first because one leads to the other, essentially. Um, as I said, we've made some efforts to support the existing business community, but we are going to refocus our efforts and, and, re and reach out there. We did say at the beginning of the year that we would evaluate the opportunity to look at a fully residential business incubator. We're really not ready to do that, and we, we are proposing to delay that activity until at least the end of the year when we've had a better chance to see how things are going. So, in summary, I think we've developed a basis and some excellent relationships and lead referrals. I think we have had a steady startup that should ramp up significantly in the second half of the year. And, and to our mind, this initial experiment that we've done has demonstrated enough potential to allow us to continue to support, uh, to, to promote the incubator with the support of our current sponsors. So, we would ask that you look uh, favorably on continuing to fund us for for the coming fiscal year. And with that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions. Any questions from us, from the council? Um, I, I think you've done a great job in just the six months that you've gotten started. I thought there would be more businesses or more people from Fountain Hills that would have been interested in taking advantage, especially since you were also offering a service for people who had a business already that m maybe, you know, were running into trouble and needed some advice. I know we see a lot of times uh, people had uh, other careers they were an engineer or something, and then they decided, you know, I'm retiring, I want to open a store, and, and they thought that, well, you just, you know, you have an inventory, you open the door, and people are going to come in, and then they realize that there's a lot more to the business side of it that they don't understand, and, and I was hoping that some of those people would, would be reaching out to the program, but, but like you said, maybe the word just needs to get out a little more as to what you have to offer, but I think you've made great progress in um, partnering with ASU, and I, I love the idea of reaching out to the colleges and universities. I think uh, I think there's a lot of graduating students who are who would take advantage of something like this. Well, thank you, Mayor. I do think that in the second half, as we be more proactive with the existing business committee, we will see better results. Mm -hmm. so. Councilman Brown, can you see him? Thank you, Mayor. Mike, I you know I applaud you for starting this uh, incubator. At absolutely the worst economic time that you could possibly start it. And what I'm seeing the economy grow in our industry, it's starting to pick up and it's starting to grow. And so you possibly have started at exactly the right time. You've gone through the learning curve. And as the economy picks up, I hope you get overwhelmed with, with new, new clients. And with that being said, I, I would voice my opinion to direct staff to continue supporting Anyone else on council? Um, then can I get a motion? Was that a formal motion? No, I'll just uh, <laughs> Would you like to make a motion then? Okay. It's a possible direction to staff regarding the continuation. Mm -hmm. Well, I have um, a motion. Sure. I'd make, I'd make that motion to direct staff to continue working with the incubator. Second. 
Any speaker cards? No, ma'am. All right, then um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mayor 7 zero. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, ma'am. Good job. All right, we're going to item number 10, the service contract consideration. We, don't, we need four separate motions for this. Consideration of professional service agreements for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2012, between the Town of Fountain Hills and... Ken? Okay. Yeah, members of the council, you have authorization for the first one would be the... Um, Authorization, considering from the, the, the budget discussion and the budget adoption um, last week would be for the uh, professional service agreement for Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce in the amount of $103,200 for fiscal year July 1, 2012, June 30, 2013. Staff recommendation to approve the contract. And so um, you're starting with... I'm sorry, I missed one, didn't I? Yeah. Excuse me. That's okay. Um, we can start with the tourism. Can I get a motion on that one? So moved. Second? Second. I thought she had the first. <laughs> um, any speaker cards on this? No, ma'am. Any other council discussion on the tourism? All right, then. Uh, roll call vote, please, staff. Council Member Hanson? Aye. Vice Mayor Jay? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Yates? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 7 0. Thank you. Now we'll go back to the first one. Mayor Kavanaugh, members of the council, consideration of professional service agreements for extended hand food bank in the amount of $30,250 for fiscal year July 1, 2012, June 30, 2013, to provide food and social service referral to Fountain Hill residents. Staff recommendation to approve. Can I get a motion? Second. And any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Any council discussion? All right, roll call vote, please. Council Member Yates? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Hanson? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Vice Mayor Lachey? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 7 0. Thank you. Okay. Mayor Kavanaugh, members of the Council Professional Service Agreement in the Fountain Hills Community Theater in the amount of $72,240 in fiscal year July 1, 2012. To June 30th, 2013, to provide general production workshop camp support for Fountain Hills residents. Staff recommendation to approve the agreement. So moved. Second. Any speaker cards? No, ma'am. Any council discussion? Okay. Yeah. Any council discussion? Uh, I have the uh, same. I have the same um, same problem that I had the first time that was brought up. Uh, that uh, the theater uses uh, two of the town buildings, and the equivalent of that is uh, approximately an 80000 a year in-kind donation, and I believe that um, that is a substantial donation from the taxpayer, so I will be voting no on this one. Any other discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? We don't have a motion yet. I thought I had a motion. I did. No. Second? I did. Second. Council Member Yates? Aye. Vice Mayor Lujay? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Abstain. Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Hanson? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? No. 5 1. 10. Okay. Mayor Kavanaugh, uh, members of the Council, it's a professional service agreement with Boys and Girls Club of Scottsdale and the key branch in the amount of $8,000 for the fiscal year July 1. 2012, June 30, 2013, to provide teen activity programs to include academic success, good character, citizenship, and healthy lifestyles for Fountain Hills residents. Staff recommendation to approve the agreement. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any speaker cards on this one? No, ma'am. Any council discussion? No. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Elke? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Lachey? Aye. Council Member Yates? Aye. Council Member Hanson? Aye. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Mayor 7 0. All right. Now we'll go on to consideration with possible direction to staff to authorize an unbudgeted expenditure in amount of $28,017.21 to the Arizona Department of Water Resources 
for the municipality fee for fiscal year 2011-12 as established by the Arizona Legislature, which was tabled at the December 1st, 2011 Town Council meeting. Okay. Council members of the Council, um, Mr. Reese is here tonight to uh, present this subject to you. Okay, Thank you, Mr. Buchanan, um, Mayor, Council members. Um, on December uh, 1st, 2011, staff presented to the Town Council information regarding the Town's obligation to pay a uh, water user fee imposed to the t on the Town by the Arizona Department of Water Resources. That is in the amount of $20,017.21. The authority was given to them uh, by Senate Bill 1624, which is state's uh, environmental Budget uh, re Reconciliation Bill. Uh, during the meeting, the Council uh, chose to table the issue because the Council was given information that the Legislature was uh, going to be acting on this, uh, whether to um, repeal the bill or make um, um, adjustments to the bill. Uh, Wednesday, March 21st, the House Appropriations Committee uh, um, considered and unanimous, unanimously passed Senate Bill uh, 1288, uh, which repealed uh, that bill. The legislation repealed the authority for ADWR to impose any fees um, on cities or towns um, after physical year 2012-2013, uh, uh, but there were no provisions that were uh, given to them to repeal the current year. So um, the um, if there's any uh, risk at all, um, ADWR doesn't have any uh, real authority to enforce the, the town to pay it. It's just uh, reported to the governor's office and and um, I, the joint legislature's office. So I don't know if there's any real um, um, legislative action that can happen. Um, with that, um, you have all the information that was um, presented on the December 1st uh, meeting. And I will answer any questions I can. Questions, yes. Councilman Elke. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Reese. Um, based on a previous discussion that this council had and tabled this back in December, I can't imagine any scenario or situation based on the information that we have right now where I would vote in favor of paying this fee considering what the town, uh, the town doesn't have a water company. We, I mean, this is just a fee that would be imposed unnecessarily and I think without cause. Um, but I couldn't imagine a scenario based on the information that we have where I would I would vote to pay this fee. And that's I think in part why we agreed to table it back in December. So I appreciate uh, appreciate the presentation and um, you know, let them send us to collections. Council Mazzucchi? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Raymond. Um, the budget transfer that you would, uh, that where you would get this $28,000 from, how is that when it says it's on the salary line, how is that um, going to be determined? Um, Mayor Kavanaugh, Councilman Dickey, uh, it is the savings from the um, chief building official when he left uh, will be paid out of that. And we, in anticipation of, of having to pay this uh, fee, uh, we cut short the wash maintenance program, so there was some savings there. We we did um, fulfill the full contract with our uh, wash maintenance crew at $101,000, but there was some additional money above that that we were going to do some additional work, so that was the savings from that. So, um, Mayor, the um, so when this was imposed, it was uh, imposed on cities and towns and municipalities who um, were incorporated. That's 73% uh, of the state of Arizona. The Arizona Department of Water Resources is a state agency to um, have services, legitimate services for the whole entire state of Arizona, but 27% of the state was not um, uh, mandated to pay this. So the cities and towns are not only covering the state agency, the state's responsibility, but also covering 27% of the state. Um, they continuously said municipalities were free to recover the cost, however we saw fit, but obviously without water uh, service ourselves, we couldn't pass that on to consumers, nor would I have wanted to do that. So I have no intention of voting for this either. 
First of all, I would like to thank State Representative John Kavanaugh for sponsoring the bill to end this fee. Uh, he was the sponsor of it in the House. Also, when this originally was passed, he was the one who argued against it unsuccessfully, and it was passed. And I'd like to ask uh, Andrew, what's the implication of not paying this? I mean, it is, it's, it's the law. It's, they're telling us we have to pay it. And are we supposed to be following the law here? Um, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, I would never advocate for not following the law in the state. Um, the the question that's been asked by many municipalities that are smaller municipalities in general, ones that don't have their own water service provider, is um, what mechanism by which can we impose the fee since we don't have a way to pass it through to customers? Um, there are a handful of small municipalities in the state who have refused to pay. Um, most of the larger cities that have water systems themselves pass the fee through and are coming to the end of the time where they're imposing the fee, so they've, they've made the payments, um, but there are no penalty provisions built into the, the provisions, so we're not sure what the penalty would be. Initially, when the bill was passed, the concern was that state code revenues would be withheld if cities balked at paying the bill, um, and it was... In, supposed to be a, a one-year hit when the bill came out and it actually was a continuing fee. That's when there was quite an uproar. The negotiation that followed, everybody said, one time, we'll go back and repeal, repeal it next year. So I don't know how many cities have failed to pay, but I know that there are a handful out there who were initially refusing. Well, I, personally, I don't see why it's just because there's no penalty. It's, it's the law and we're supposed to pay it, regardless of how we pay it, uh, we're supposed to pay it. I mean, how does it look to our residents if we just decide that uh, we don't want to pay this just because we don't we don't like it and there's no penalty involved? I can't see how we could do that. Any other council discussion on it? I believe Councilman Tate. Oh, yeah. Councilman. Okay. Give me a little signal. <laughs> I, just, uh, <laughs> I, I do appreciate, as Larry, I do appreciate the, the mayor's comments as far as this being the law and cities and towns you know, are residents. We want everyone to follow the law, but I think philosophically and from, you know, we're, these are tax dollars that our residents have paid into the coffers and the state's asking us to pay this fee, um, in my opinion, unjustly and passing this cost down onto the town of Fountain Hills. And I think in this particular situation, it's important to take a stand on this. It's something that we discussed at the last meeting in December when this thing first came across uh, our desks. And, and we were asking, well, what's this for? And why, why are we having to pay this? And I think the legislature's thought process, although I wasn't intimately involved with that, or involved whatsoever, um, is that the cities and towns would then pass it on to their residents and that's how they would recoup it. Um, I'm not in favor of raising, increasing taxes to recoup this and I'm certainly not in favor of paying this. So, Mayor, I would move that we direct staff not to pay this fee that has been sent by the state and to inquire perhaps further with the state as to what additional action or legal inquiries to what additional action may be taken. I second that. Well, I, I actually feel that we're setting a really bad precedent here. Uh, we charge fees in our town for all kinds of services, and maybe the next year we change it, we reduce it, we raise it, whatever. Uh, we have penalties for people not paying, but for us not to pay something that we have to pay and then ask residents to pay fees, I, I, I just I think that we're setting a very bad example and this is not raising taxes, this is already in the budget, so we do have the money to pay it. And I think that we should follow the law and pay it. It's been changed now. They didn't make it retroactive, so they didn't give us the opportunity not to pay it. And regardless of whether it was unfair when it was first imposed, it was imposed, and we are supposed to pay it. And I think, I think we should set a good example to our taxpayers that we expect to, to pay their fees uh, and we should pay it. Councilman Hanson. Yeah. Oh. Um, when we assess fees, then we're providing a service. 
and they're assessing the fee on a service that we don't provide. So that's what makes me feel more comfortable because it's it's <laughs> we don't provide the service. So why would we be paying for this? I mean, the bill would more likely go to the water company. I'm sure they would love to hear me say that. But <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Yes, Vice Mayor Richard. Um I've heard the the words um, violation of the law, and um, those are pretty strong terms, and I certainly do not want to violate the law. <laughs> but it appears to me that the law has been repealed. So I'm not quite sure what law I would be violating by voting um, not to pay this fee. Um, this, this is akin to um, asking the state legislatures to pay... Um, for our Parks and Recreation Department, um, one of our own business units. The state has asked us to pay for one of their business units primarily, and um, that is, is um, something that we balked at when we had this discussion initially, and um, I, I simply don't see this as a violation of the law because the law has been, has been um, appealed. Um, I, I like the motion that um, was put on the table by Council, Councilman Elke that uh, we investigate this a bit further to determine um, consequences or however your motion was, was put before us. Thank you. I, I would just disagree with that and say that the law has been changed. They didn't totally repeal it because if they repealed it and made it retroactive, they would have said you don't have to pay for this year. But they didn't. They said from now on, we're not going to have this fee, but for fiscal year 2011-12, you still owe us this money, and we didn't pay it then, we tabled it, but that doesn't mean it's still on the books that we owe it. Councilman Chase? Thank you. Well, I think what the, what the legislature did is they passed a bad law. They realized they passed a bad law, they repealed it. And they didn't want to write checks to refund those cities and towns that had already paid the water fee. We had the foresight back in December to say, this doesn't seem like a good law. This doesn't seem like a, you know, this is something that we as a town should be paying. So let's table it and we'll wait. And we waited and the legislature did the right thing. And now what we're looking at is paying on a fee that was assessed before that has now been acknowledged to be a bad law. And you know, I think it's a bad precedent to set that you can do this legislature or the state, you can do this to the cities and towns, and we'll pay it. We're not going to balk at it. We'll just pay it if you pass it. We're going to pay it if it's something that's unjust uh, or something that shouldn't be passed on to cities and towns such as Fountain Hills in, in the instance of this water bill that we'll pay it. So I think that, you know, we're, we're, we're saying no. And I think it's the right thing to do. Do you have a council discussion? Vice Mayor, if I, I mean, <laughs> I'm the Vice Mayor, you're the Mayor. It's very confusing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. New, 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 okay. new, new titles. Um, mayor, if I may um, direct uh, a question to a town attorney. Andrew, um, if we um, decide not to pay this, um, and you could repeat yourself if you choose to, <laughs> are we violating the law in any way? Now, Mayor, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, I, I don't think there's any way to frame it other than there's a statutory requirement to pay the fee, that the fee's been repealed, so that the current law today is that the fee doesn't exist anymore, but it did not impact the fee that was due in the current fiscal year that was adopted in last year's legislative session. So, like any good lawyer, you didn't answer my question. <laughs> 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 or not even legal advice on Thank you, Mayor. I think I'm hearing you say that, what I just said, that this was in effect in 2011-12. We're still required to pay for that year because it wasn't retroactive that uh, we didn't have to pay it. Regardless of whether there's, you know, no penalties if we don't pay it, uh, it's, it's, we're still going to get a bill that says we have to pay this. Correct? Am I right? Uh, Madam Mayor, the, the current bill in this year's legislative session did not have a retroactivity clause. It omitted the, pre the prior year 
And the discussions in the legislature were uh, very clearly that the cities that had agreed and signed on to the prior year's bill had done so only because it was presented as a one-time hit. When it came out that it wasn't a one-time hit, then that was a complete 180 from where everybody thought they were. And the discussion this year was to repeal it so that it remained just a one-time hit. Councilman Elkin. Mayor, I would like to, I'd like to withdraw my motion um, based on what we're hearing here. And I would move to table this issue and wait and see. Wait and see what the legislature does. Wait and see if we get a bill. Let's table it so we don't have to have a vote on an issue that may potentially be a violation of the law. But I would move to table this and that staff take no action one way or another on this. And we wait. Second. Council discussion? Mayor? Councilman Nate. Now that's an attorney move right there. <laughs> Too many attorneys in the um, I concur with everybody. To, to get a bill on a service that we don't provide seems ludicrous to me, but I agree with you, Mayor, that the law is the law. We don't agree with all the laws, but I think Kate kind of found our way out here, so I would agree with that. Any other council discussion? Well, I, I, is that a motion? It was. And that was, you withdrew the other motion and you're making a new motion. Do you have a second on his motion? Henry. And we have a second. Any other discussion on it? All right, then we'll have a vote. Roll call, please. Council Member Dickey? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Leger? Aye. Council Member Elke? Aye. Council Member Yates? Aye. Council Member Hanson? Aye. Mayor Favreau? Mr. Table. <laughs> we need more information. All right, just just a table of uh, vote. Aye. Right. Right. Mayor seven zero. Thank you, Mayor Cavanaugh. Members of the council, <clears throat> probably what would happen is that they'll throw the town manager in jail, and I'll be picking up. <laughs> I'll be picking up paper on Shea Boulevard. <laughs> Remember that there, there are enough lawyers here, though, to get me off. <laughs> Maybe they get me off. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's go on to number 12. Consideration of authorizing a budget transfer in the amount of $28,017.21 from the Development Services Building Division Salaries Line Item uh, to Development Services Engineering Wash Maintenance Line Item. Mayor Cavill, I'll move the council to actually take no action on this item. So do we need a motion or is this table because the other one's tabled? Okay, then we'll go on to 13. Consideration of Resolution 2012-19 relating to the intergovernmental agreement with Maricopa County for law enforcement services provided by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Department to the Town of Fountain Hills for the five-year period beginning July 1st, 2012 and ending June 30th, 2017 in the amount of $2,752,382 for fiscal year 12-15. Mr. Cavanaugh, members of the council, again, you have uh, in, in front of you uh, an agreement for a five-year period, which was the, the previous agreement was for three. Um, there's um, the automatic renewal for one-year periods up to the five-year period. Um, there was some general liability, um, an automobile liability and workman's compensation changes um, within the agreement. Uh, no change in level of service um, from the previous um, Agreement. Um, there was some discussions about the discussion. There's language in there for the de uh, deputies on scene within five minutes standard violations cited to the magistrate court. The focus on the community oriented policing language. Request for financial and administrative information directed to the sheriff's office or chief administration. Um, so it's a, we think as staff is a very good agreement. We want to thank the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for cooperating with us on, on a very good agreement for a five-year period, and we strongly recommend that you consider approving it. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for the great cleanup that they did on Shea. Uh, we had a situation where we had trash filled up, a lot of trash filled up on both sides of Shea, all the way through Fountain Hills. 
And I, I can't imagine why people just throw their trash out the window, but I walked up and down some of that section and it was, it was really an eyesore. Uh, people coming into town seeing that kind of trash. Certainly our community was not shining. Uh, so I talked to, uh, Paul Mood and, uh, found out that, of course, because of the budget cuts, we only had, uh, two maintenance people from the landscaping company to assign to do not only all of say, but the medians. And it would have been, uh, a big expense to, to get some people out there to clean. So I contacted the sheriff's office and they were, they, within a week, we had, uh, the chain gang down there within four days. They did an amazing job. Everything got cleaned up, and I'm um, very grateful for them for doing that. They saved us a lot of money, and now we're we're looking good. We're looking good up and down shed. Any other council discussion? Yes, Councilwoman Dickey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the budget um, book that we have ha has a, um, a, a a part of it during, uh, with the public safety that talks about objectives and then accomplishments. So, like last year's book had um, for their 11, 12 objectives, um, for example, participate in the Town Citizen Academy, um, country multi-housing, that kind of thing. And that turned into the accomplishments in this book that we have now for, for um, the next year. So um, just, uh, I guess, um, if, if it comes up for, if there are any events or anything that we want to prioritize, that the option is still there for us to have um, objectives for 12, 13. There's just there's just nothing there's nothing in the budget book this time. So I think this um, this renewal uh, in the past we've had subcommittees that actually worked on the on the contract on the long term one, which is what this one is not just the every year rollover. So this one got a little bit ahead of I guess ahead of me I, I would say because I, I wasn't prepared. But uh, usually we would do that. And I think uh, Councilwoman Hansen and uh, Councilman Centino were on the committee with me last time. So just, I did ask about this, so we are free to have priorities. And of course the town manager meets regularly with the captain so that um, if it's situational, something happens, or even if it's just a, a philosophical thing that we want to do, like a community policing and that kind of thing, we still ha do have that opportunity even though it's not in our budget per se this time. Anyone else? Can I get a motion? So moved. Any speaker for our staff? No, ma'am. Any other council discussion? Can I get a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Elke? Aye. Councilmember Hansen? Aye. Councilmember Yates? Aye. Vice Mayor Lejay? Aye. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Dickey? Aye. And Mayor Tavano? Aye. Mayor Tavano? Mayor Tavano, members of council, I'd like to give personal uh, recognition to the town attorney and to the deputy um, town manager for working this contract through with um, uh, the staff with MCSO. All right, thank you. Uh, Ken, do you have any reports? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, and no report on recent activities either, so then all I need is a motion to adjourn. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Minister 7-0. Thank you, everybody.